put the score up there for you. Just as before, 
the west screen was the doorway through which I could relate to the outside world, which was Puerto Rico now, enabling a deeper immersion into the cultural, pro cultural productions of my homeland. Folkloric music, and particularly salsa, became the main music coming out of my playlist, reacquiring a stronger sense of meter and rhythm along the way. Within these styles, I could find something that was homely, but also uncanny, or unheimlich, to use Freud's term. To the millennial generation, those born roughly between 1980 and 1995, this is music from the past, one that we will listen to only at Christmas festivities or when we roll with that Coca-Cola one call in the, in the backseat of the car. Generally speaking, these genres are not part of our everyday life. Yet, they are very evocative of the island's community and incite a recollection of memories as well as providing a, same, a sense of belonging. This is in blunt contrast with the cultural atmosphere, geographical landscapes, and weather conditions found in Buffalo, New York. So, out of a mixture of identity search, imagined past, fragmented memories, and nostalgia, I was reconnecting with the island's more traditional and colloquial musical culture that I did during the time that I lived there. This duality of looking back to the vernacular past and networking while networking in the present on a more global stage was crucial for the next compositional projects at hand. Following Leo Brower's words that culture is found in everyday life, in every human act that surrounds us, it may be said that I was getting a more complex and diversified apprehension of my personal culture. As already implied, I may greatly admire a musical genre or, genre or style while not being interested in replicating it. Respect and knowledge of tradition and history by implication is very important as it situates the individual in a specific place and period, and thus context. I like to think of my compositions as exerting a rational expansion within the diverse music of the world. One particular perspective out of many in the digital age. It is music that is conscious of the history that preceded it, as well as its current location. So, with that compositional precept in mind, will it be viable to incorporate some of the characteristics of traditional Puerto Rican music into an already cosmopolitan type of style? Fusions between classical-oriented languages and folkloric rhythms, pools, and instruments have already been experimented with and perfected by previous generations. I had nothing to contribute in this area. The idea of using internal crystals, crystals as source material was very effective when combining varied techniques taken from diverse cultures, which were now all part of my musical vocabulary. In my music you will find not obvious reference or quotations, but fragments, short motives, and traditional rhythms in a familiar context as elements or basics are basic ideas of a larger fabric. This is especially true of the guitar quartet I wrote last year, titled Signos Fijos, Signos Mutables, from which I'll play some excerpts for you now.
even though the sonic result might not reflect it, motifs and concepts from Af Afro-Caribbean traditions are used and, de and developed here. The main basic idea developed, or motive, is a simple rhythm found in many Puerto Ricans and Cuban dances. Uh, for percussive sonority, was achieved through the palm mute and the snap pizzicato. The snap being used alongside contrasting rhythms to achieve a polyrhythmic texture. There are some of the seeds that these are some of the seeds that may be found throughout the piece in foreground and middle ground levels. Adjusted, of course, to suit my specific needs as a composer. It is my belief that with this composition, I was able to reach a certain uncompromised balance between multiple layers of world cultures. Thank you. Life. So 
Uh, you might say a composer. Uh, yeah, it actually it was Mark Twain's favorite city in the U.S. <laughs> Figure that out. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like you know, you you get a lot of isolated uh, winters and a lot of snow and a lot of cold and, and snow. Of course, that that influences you, influences you personally. But I think that it is not that far apart from from the. the the enterprise of being a composer, like uh, there's a, we, we spend a long periods, long periods of time just alone composing with, with nobody else. So, would that be? It? Um, yes. Hi, um, you mentioned salsa playing a role in um, being influential in your work. Is is there any particular artist that dominated uh, that influenced you primarily? Well, I can go from the 80s flag. <laughs> I love Frankie Ruiz, I love uh, Hector Lavoe and Hispania Costa, Rudy Colón, and going back, Ismael Rivera, Ismael Quintana. Uh, those were kind of like the main people that I was listening to.